are the banks up to their old tricks again? The tricks that many people believed caused the financial crisis. Our own Dr Alastair Milne, who's become acknowledged as one of the leading experts on the credit crunch, fears that they are, or at least that one bank is. Barclays, which unlike many of its peers, didn't take any money from the UK government, he says has found a way of making $12.5 billion disappear from its balance sheet. I asked him to explain as simply as possible just how Barclays had achieved this. Well, I was, I was a bit worried when I first saw this deal because what, what they're doing is they're selling a fairly large chunk of the, what are sometimes called toxic assets, it's the, the structured credit securities, securities that are ultimately based on loans like subprime mortgages. And they had a lot of these which were causing them difficulties and they sold um, something like $12.5 billion worth to two unnamed outside investors. Now that, that's fine, but where did the outside investors get the money from? The answer was that Barclays is lending them the money to buy the assets. And that, on the face of it, that seems a rather strange thing to do. So what's the ultimate fear here? That there'll be another banking crisis at Barclays? Um, I, I wasn't worried about kind of the system as a whole, but I was worried about are Barclays actually doing the right thing for their own shareholders. So my first concern was, well, hang on, if you do a deal like this, um, you're lending the money. So if these assets perform very badly, they might do, then the loan won't be repaid and they'll come back onto your, onto your books. Whereas if they do very well, then these outside investors get, you know, make the money and make the profit. So it seems like you've still got the downside, but you're giving away the upside. So that was, that was my original concern about the deal. If this is so risky, why did they do this deal in the first place? Well, it, it, it turns out the, the motive for the deal, the main motive, was actually to do with their accounting uh, treatment of these assets. The big problem for Barclays was that these are very illiquid assets. It's very hard to buy and sell them. And that means the market price can kind of go up and down like a yo-yo. You know, one day you can find a good price in the market, the next day a very poor price. And that's a big balance sheet risk. If you've got $12 billion of assets and it suddenly falls to $11 billion, that's quite a big hole. Um, so by selling the assets and then securing a loan on them, they were able to turn them into an asset which is regarded from an accounting point of view as much, much more stable. It's, it's 12 and a half billion of loan and it sits on the balance sheet as that amount without going up and down. Since this story first appeared in the national press, you've had a big conference call with important people at Barclays. Did they say things which reassured you? Um, they, they did. They explained a lot more about the deal. I, I was still very puzzled, to be honest. I, I couldn't understand how... the the risks of the deal could be that low. But what they tell me is that they've actually spent a huge amount of time and effort, both their own internal staff, they've had outside consultancy from PwC for over several days, modeling the risks of these assets. And it, it seems that the key thing is that at least as far as future repayment is concerned, the future cash flows, they're not really that risky after all. So they, they've, they, they, they've convinced themselves, and they've convinced the board as well, that, that they can be fairly confident about what will eventually be repaid out of, this, out of these assets. And that's what makes the deal worthwhile from their point of view. Presumably, whatever Barclays done is completely legal. If it's legal, and if it's in the interests of Barclays shareholders, what's the problem? I, I don't think there's ultimately a problem, a, a major problem. I mean, it's, as I say, it's an accountancy-driven deal to protect them from the risks of these valuations moving up and down more than, more than anything else. Um, I've still got some question marks. Um, it, it seems to me there's still some potential gains which they, give, they might be giving away to these outside investors, even though they've persuaded me those are perhaps relatively small. But I'm a bit surprised that Barclays didn't themselves take a, a share of the equity in this in, 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 this, in this vehicle. Obviously they couldn't take all of it or it wouldn't be an outside deal at all, but you know, why not take 40, 45 percent and then they could have kept some of the gains if there are any for themselves. What that suggests is that Barclays are actually perhaps a little bit more pessimistic about these assets. It's, it's still, you know, these are still fairly good quality assets, but they're perhaps a bit more pessimistic than the outside investors they've got in to, uh, to who think they can make a profit out of all of this. 
you're acknowledged to be one of the leading experts on the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. What was your motivation in bringing the details of this to the attention of the wider world? Well, I think, you know, originally it was simply concern about are they doing this deal the right way? Um, I think if you are going to sell assets like this, it, it's critically important that you sell them at the right sort of price. You're, and you know, a, a deal like this has to be undergo tremendously close scrutiny from, from both sides, from the banks selling the assets, for any investor who's purchasing them. But I, I think now, I think it's still a, a fascinating case, but I think the real issue now is, is this kind of deal one that can help other banks other than Barclays? This is the kind of thing that we will see many other major financial institutions doing. So will this be a template for other banks which are in a similar position? Well, I think it, it's workable for the particular type of assets that Barclays put into this deal. So, so what, I think one of the things that people from sort of outside the industry don't realise is that, yes, a lot of these complex securities have, have turned out to be problematic, but they vary a lot. Some are really should never have been created in the first place. Others, and the, the, this is the category I think the Barclays deal falls into, are, are loans which are you know, ultimately in the long run have, have a lot of value in them. They're going, to, they're going to return most at least of what was promised to investors. But the, the, the problem is simply the complexity that investors don't really understand them and therefore the market is very uncertain what to make of them. Now in that situation a deal like this where you sell the assets so they become a pension, effectively a loan as far as the bank is concerned um, is, is a sensible route to take. But it, it's only going to work for a, sh a proportion of, the, uh, of these type of toxic securities. Others where there are bigger risks involved, this type of deal won't work. One last question. What are the lessons for students of the financial crisis at London's leading business school? Well, I think, I think this would make a wonderful case study and there's a, there's a possibility of making this and I think I think actually the, the most the biggest lessons I think are probably the micro lessons about how to manage a deal what are what are the risks involved because Barclays have had to do a very thorough job about thinking what could go wrong with something like this I think I think the broader lesson is one which we, we probably knew already but it's worth reminding ourselves which is that getting involved as a bank in excessively complex uh, transactions um, you know, the original problem was the complex assets that Barclays took on in the first place. Now they're doing rather a complex deal to help remove some of the risks of those assets. But really, it would have been better never to have got into such complexities in the first place.